Good morning. Welcome to the divine service here at Zion Lutheran Church and to those joining us on the radio and online this morning. I pray God's blessings upon you as we begin our worship service this morning. And we begin with the singing of our opening hymn, We Walk by Faith and Not by Sight. Greetings in our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We welcome you to the Sunday, August 20th, 2023 worship service at Zion Lutheran Church, Lincoln, Illinois. Participating in the production of this broadcast are Casey Jones, Rachel Welker, and Robert Klim. Our organist is Dora Thompson. The opening hymn is number 720. We walk by faith and not by sight. Hymn number 720 found in the Lutheran service book. Josh, Rachel, and Kayla Walker are sponsoring the flowers and the radio broadcast today to the glory of God and thanksgiving for their many blessings. Please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered together to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the Christian fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, in holy baptism you declared us to be your children and gathered us into your one holy church, in which you daily and richly forgive us our sins and grant us new life through your Holy Spirit. Be in our midst, enliven our faith, and graciously receive our prayer and praise through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. May God be gracious to us and bless us, and make his face shine upon us. May be known on earth your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you judge the peoples with equity and guide the nations up on earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has yielded its increase. God, our God, shall bless us. 
God shall bless us. Let all the ends of the earth fear him. pray. Almighty and everlasting Father, you give your children many blessings even though we are undeserving. In every trial and temptation, grant us steadfast confidence in your loving kindness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah, the 56th chapter, beginning at the first verse. Thus says the Lord, keep justice and do righteousness, for soon my salvation will come and my deliverance be revealed. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord and to be his servants, everyone who keeps the Sabbath and does not profane it and holds fast my covenant. These I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. The Lord God who gathers the outcasts of Israel declares, I will gather yet others to him besides those already gathered. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The catechetical review in regards to the fourth, in regards to the Lord's Prayer, what is the fourth petition? Give us this day our daily bread. What does this mean? God certainly gives daily bread to everyone without our prayers, even to all evil people. But we pray in this petition that God would lead us to realize this and to receive our daily bread with thanksgiving. What is meant by daily bread? Daily bread includes everything that has to do with the support and needs of the body, such as food, drink, clothing, shoes, house, home, land, animals, money, goods, 
a devout husband or wife, devout children, devout workers, devout and faithful rulers, good government, good weather, peace, health, self-control, good reputation, good friends, faithful neighbors, and the like. The epistle reading from Romans chapter 11, beginning at the first verse. I ask then, has God rejected his people? By no means, for I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. Now I am speaking to you Gentiles, inasmuch then as I am an apostle to the Gentiles. I magnify my ministry in order somehow to make my fellow Jews jealous and thus save some of them. For if their rejection means the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance mean but life from the dead? As regards the gospel, they are enemies of God for your sake. But as regards election, they are beloved for the sake of their forefathers. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Just as you were at one time disobedient to God, but now have received mercy because of their disobedience, So they too have now been disobedient in order that by the mercy shown to you, they also may now receive mercy. For God has consigned all to disobedience that he may have mercy on all. This is the word of the Lord. We rise for the singing of the verse and the Alleluia. Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went away from there and withdrew to the district of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and was crying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely oppressed by a demon. But he did not answer her a word. And his disciples came and begged him, saying, Send her away, for she's crying after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. And he answered, It is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord. Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, O woman, great is your faith. Be it done for you as you desire. And her daughter was healed. Instantly. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Having heard the gospel of the Lord, we confess our common Christian faith through the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things, visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being a one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, 
who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated for the singing of the hymn. The hymn of the day is hymn number 653. In Christ there is no east or west. Hymn number 653 found in the Lutheran service book. The sermon text this morning from today's gospel reading. Jesus said to her, O woman, great is your faith. Thus far the words of our text. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, for somebody um, who's in a profession such as mine, it probably is not going to shock you when I say something like, you know, I've always hoped to be able to be a hero of the faith. You know, and you probably would say, well, I, I hope so. You know. um, now, I'm not talking about being a martyr. I'm not talking about going out and uh, looking for trouble, looking for martyrdom. But I do want to be someone who stands at all times on trust in Jesus Christ. But, or unfortunately, or sometimes what I'm afraid of. What scares me, what makes me afraid is that sometimes I am concerned that instead of having faith in Christ, I have faith in faith. Or I have faith in me when I should have faith in Jesus. Like last week, we heard of Peter walking on the water, right? He's walking on the water to Jesus and being overcome by the fear of the wind and the waves. Peter looks like he has lots of faith. But what is it that Peter really has? Peter had a doubt that challenged Jesus along with a pinch of bravado. And so what Jesus saying to him, Oh, little faith. Why did you doubt? This week, 
we meet a woman who looks as if she should have no faith. She is a foreigner. She is not of the household of Israel. She is uh, one whose lineage traces back to the ancient enemies of the people of Israel. But this woman is called by Jesus one of great faith. This Canaanite woman is one who calls out to Jesus, and she's not going to stop calling out to Jesus until the Lord gives her a favorable answer unto her plea. Now that is a great aspect of faith in Jesus Christ. She is one who lays hold of Christ and trusts that the Messiah can do what the Messiah is here to do, and that is save. This woman has a demon-possessed daughter. And this woman is bold to approach Jesus precisely because he is the Lord and the Messiah, and she fully believes that and is convinced of that to her core. We previously heard Peter, bold Peter, say, Lord, if it's you, if, if that doubt of if slips into Peter, this woman, on the other hand, comes to, to Jesus not with if you, she approaches Jesus rather with because it's you. She approaches Jesus knowing who Jesus is and that his crumbs will be enough. So different though. Peter, in his doubt, gets the one word answer come. She, in her confidence, on the other hand, gets absolute silence out of Jesus. Now, the woman at the well, do you remember the woman at the well? Jesus said to her, If you knew who it was who asked you for a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The Canaanite woman, on the other hand, approaches Jesus saying, you will give. You will give because it's you and it's in your nature and it's in your promise. You are the Lord. You are the son of David. Her reward is the silence of a stone. Silence is a severe blow to her, I would imagine. So it leads us to wonder, what, what, what does a person do when it appears that God is your enemy? When it appears that God is angry with you and his grace and Mercy are hidden. His help is not to be found, and he stands distant away from you. In those instances, we must learn to cling to the word of God. Cling to the word alone, even though God appears different, even though God appears distant, even though God appears to be something other than what he says he is, we must hold to the promise of God, even when it seems that God is angry at us. This woman does that. She is persistent. So much so that the disciples come to Jesus and basically say to him, give her what she wants so she'll be quiet and go away. Jesus' concern goes way deeper than that. He is not a, a perfunctory miracle worker or a genie whose lamp people can rub and get things out of him. And though the disciples nor the woman see it yet at this time, Jesus is concerned with her soul. Twice she cries out, Lord, help. There's a third time that she cries out, Lord, calling him that. The third time she cries out in the face of Jesus' apparent rejection. She retains the faith that trusts that Jesus will act on her behalf. Now Jesus wants to know. Jesus wants to make it apparent. Does this woman really know who he is? Or have the words that have come out of her mouth, Lord, son of David, help me. Have mercy on me. Are those words simply words that are babbled as an incantation and nothing more than that? Or are those words, words born out of great and deep and noble faith? Because Jesus is not one to accept a parroting and pandering treatment. But it doesn't take long for Jesus to know that these cries come from deep within this woman's heart. 
these cries come out from a place of great faith. Having heard silence and a rebuff, this woman has the faith of the psalmist who says, I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of the wicked. She has the faith of Job, Job who said, Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. That is the faith that this woman has. Again, the woman speaks to Jesus. This third time, because he says to her, it's not right to take the bread that's meant for the children's table and give it to the dogs. She speaks to him again. Those are harsh words. Words that would cause anger in many and dejection in others. And how does this woman respond? She completely agrees with Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, God does have a plan of salvation. Your mission is, Jesus, to the lost sheep of Israel. This plan will come to its fruition in the fullness of time. You are Israel's Savior, and your bread is meant for the children's table. I don't want the food that belongs to the children, because when kids eat, the dogs get the crumbs. She is saying that the bread of the Messiah is so abundant and overflowing that parts of it fall onto the floor. Remember the feeding of the 5,000? How many baskets left over? Twelve baskets left over. This woman basically agrees with Jesus and says, everyone should know that. Everyone should know that you are sent to the house of Israel. But the crumbs are enough for me and my daughter. We need nothing more than what falls from the master's table. This woman is not just paying lip service to Jesus. She believes in his mission to Israel. She believes that he is the Lord. She believes that he is the Messiah, and she is confident of his grace and mercy, and she is confident they are so abundant that it will overflow to the Gentiles also. And Jesus says to her, O oh, woman, you have such great faith. What a wonderful compliment from Jesus. Now, it's very often that you as a Christian, you might encounter times in your life when the providence of God is at odds with what the Word of God says. That the blessings and mercies of God seem not to be overflowing to you or in your direction, you will encounter sorrows and sadnesses, sicknesses, times of great hardness or depression. That's absolutely true. And when confronted with such circumstances, the Christian needs to rivet their attention on the person and the work of Jesus Christ and what the Word says about him. We must do this especially when Satan comes to us and sticks his finger in our chest and on our forehead and says, you, you are a great sinner. And you do not deserve the mercy and the grace of God. What do we do when that happens? When Satan is against us, when we are oppressed by our sins or our life circumstances and the devil's accusations mount against us, it is then that we must be confident, even more confident, that Jesus is the Lord, the Son of David. And when faced with doubt in Jesus' grace, we are to agree with the word of God. Yes, yes, I am indeed a great sinner and not worthy of your grace. But you have promised, God, you have promised forgiveness. And you did not come to call the righteous, but you have come to call the sinner. Therefore, like the publican who did not dare lift his head, or his eyes to heaven. It is that time you cry out and you call out to God. Lord, Son of David, have mercy on me, a sinner. Because great faith comes from one who despairs of their self, who finds no comfort in their self, but clings only to the grace of the Lord and his word and his promise. 
And by the grace of God, it is a wonderful thing to be able to say, I am the chief of sinners. Because that faith also clings to and understands the truth that Jesus came to save sinners. And that Jesus will never turn away one who comes to him in such deep and great faith. So may God grant it to each and every one of us that we have such faith. That we believe that Jesus Christ is the Lord. That he is the Messiah. The Savior of the world. And trust that even the scraps that fall from the Lord's table are enough for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Now may that peace that passes all understanding be in your hearts and your minds through the one true faith in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Let us now all rise for prayers. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O oh Lord, bless this congregation and church. Grant that it may be a house of prayer and we be a people of prayer. Strengthen our fellowship with one another through our confessing of sins and the reception of your body and blood in the sacrament of the altar. Grant also that we grow in friendship with one another as we gather for congregational activities, and we pray that you would sanctify our time together. Lord, in your mercy. Hear your prayers. O oh Lord, endow your people with courage that the church may steadfastly proclaim your irrevocable gifts and calling, that the disobedient, the delinquent, and the erring may receive mercy, and that those who hear would become grafted into Jesus Christ, the true vine. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. O Lord, bless all honest work and occupations, and grant that we may use well the fruits of our labors. Give us generosity for those in need. Bless the tithes and the offerings that accompany our sacrifice of praise. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. O oh Lord, care for those who cry to you, whether they are beset with grief and sorrow, pain or trouble. Especially do we pray for Kelly Hazley's brother-in-law, Raymond, as he undergoes tests to see if his cancer is still in remission. Continue to strengthen Marty as he seeks health for his body. Give him mental and emotional fortitude to work hard and strengthen his flesh. We pray for Patty Clem and her family, as they continue to grieve over the death of her mother, Dolly. Comfort them through the blessed hope of the resurrection of the dead and the life everlasting. Be pleased, for Christ's sake, to answer with a yes the prayers of those who cry out to you in the anxiousness of their hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. And dear Heavenly Father, we pray once again this morning for those families who have taken their first child to college and have driven away, perhaps with a tear or two in their eyes, who have walked by bedrooms the last couple days and saw that this is not summer camp, but the next phase in a life that is continuing on. We pray you to bless their students, their sons and their daughters. We pray that you would be with those families in their households, comforting them with your grace, watching over their children and watching over their families in all things. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. All these things, and whatever else you know we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the reception of our gifts and offerings.
You have been sharing in the morning worship at Zion Lutheran Church, 205 Pulaski Street in Lincoln, Illinois, where you've just heard Reverend Mark Thompson deliver the message for this morning. If you cannot be physically present, join us every Sunday morning on the radio at 8 o'clock over WLLM 1370 AM or WLLM 105.3 FM or on org, where you would find the links to the internet stream and to the Facebook Live. Zion is a member congregation of the Worldwide Fellowship of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. If you are without a church home, we invite you to become a part of the Zion family. If we may assist you in any way, please contact us at 732-3946 or write to us at Zion Lutheran Church, 205 Pulaski Street, Lincoln, Illinois, 62656. Zion also offers a premier education with a Christian worldview for children from age 3 through the 8th grade at Zion Lutheran School. For more information concerning our school, please contact our principal, Dr. Stephen Perry, at 732-3977. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Please rise as we begin the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation. For you have had mercy on us and have given your only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. In your righteous judgment, you condemned the sin of Adam and Eve who ate the forbidden fruit. And you justly barred them and all their children from the tree of life. Yet in your great mercy, you promised salvation by a second Adam, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and his blood. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he taught us. Our, Our Father, Father, who Lord, art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way, also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen.
Welcome to the table of the Lord. Body and blood of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will strengthen and preserve you in the true faith to life everlasting. Impart to you peace.
blood of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, will strengthen and preserve you in the true faith and the life everlasting, departing in his peace. Please rise. The true body and true blood of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, will strengthen and preserve you in the true faith into life everlasting. Depart in his peace. Amen.
We give thanks to you, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and grant thee his peace. Amen. Amen. The closing hymn is number 668, Rise to Arms with Prayer Employ You, hymn number 668 found in the Lutheran Service Book. Be seated. Uh, a couple brief announcements here this morning. Today for the junior high and senior high youth groups, our final uh, summer event, which is a scavenger hunt, which will begin at the Farnham's house, and uh, or begin at the church. I'm sorry. Thank you. I see the nod of the head. Like, no. It will begin at the church here um, this afternoon at 3 o'clock. And they'll go on a video scavenger hunt, take pictures of things, then they'll meet back at the Farnham's house. 
and then that will be ending around five o'clock uh, and families may pick their students up at the Farnham's house. That address is in the bulletin uh, there and they can get it when they drop their student off. Um, also tonight or this afternoon is the ice cream social uh, which goes from 430 to seven o'clock tonight. That's also in your bulletin, so you can read about the, the ice cream, the sloppy joes, the chips, the things that will be there at the uh, ice cream social for us. So looking forward to that uh, this afternoon. P please check your Zion's light for all other, yes, and Rod has an announcement to make. Next Sunday between services, there'll be a special orders meeting to uh, look at hiring a custodial maintenance person. So between service, probably about nine, Thank you, Rod. Appreciate that very much. And please remember, if I am correct, next Sunday is rally day for our Sunday school also. So we'll be changing Sunday school classes and, and moving around there. May the Lord bless all of you. May he bless your comings in and your goings out from this time forth and forevermore. Amen.